Hey yo, welcome back. This episode, we're going to be continuing our discussion on generic classes, and we are actually recording here on a Sunday, working overtime, and I know it just needs to get done because I am behind on this series. I wasn't going to do it, but then I remem- remembered a-, a wise quote from Shia LaBeouf, who is my spirit animal, by the way, and I this came into my mind, and I was just like, I just got to do it. So here I am, just doing it. Let's get through this, but I am honestly a little bit bored of generics, so we're going to cover this in this video, maybe a little bit in the next, we'll see, and then we'll get on to something new. So, yeah. So, what do we have so far? From the previous episode, we have this item class, and it takes a type here, and that class is defined right here. So, that's the T, that that gets substituted for a particular type. But now I'm going to be showing you how to use two types. You actually just put a comma and then you put another type. So what comes after T? We'll just go with U. And you can pretty much use U anytime you want to refer to that second type. So it's similar to like a hash map. For a hash map, you'll have a key and a value. The actual number doesn't, or the actual letter doesn't matter when you're defining it. But um, anyways, what we're going to do is we're just going to create another field for U of type U. And we'll also do similar methods for that new field. So get Y, return Y, set Y, Y, man, so many Y's. Got me questioning everything right now. All right, so let's take a look at this. This needs to return U. So if all these little letters and stuff are confusing you, you're you're probably not alone, uh, and that's okay. This needs to be a U as well. So I apologize for probably using the the worst field names here. It'd probably make more sense to use something else, but. We're just going to go with it because I'm too far into it now. I can't go back and redo all this. So pretty much what we're going to do is we're going to get the Y field, and that's going to be of whatever type is passed in for this, and then we just return that field. Then for the set, we pass one in. It's of this type, and we assign it to the field. So exactly the same as X. We just switched all the Xs for Ys, which is the new the new field name, and we switched all of the Ts, the old type, to this new type. And in our code, all we have to do is we just pass in another type here. So we can also use another person, which is fine. You can also use a different type if you would like, that's fine. So this will work. And then what you can do is say item set Y, pass in another person, or you could even use the same person if you'd like, that's fine. And then we can say get Y and it works pretty much exactly the same way. Looks like we're getting one error here. Let's see what that is. I think I just need to save this item class. So I'll save that, go back. Yeah, seems to be working now. So this works, although it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. We're just using random fields and the the class doesn't even name doesn't even make any sense. It's not an item, it's actually a pair of items. So that's what I actually want to update this to. Let's switch that to pair, and I think we can hover over it. Actually, no, before you change it, back up, back it up. Right click, and then refactor, rename, and we're going to rename this to pair. And it should change it up in here, and it even change the class file name and the class name itself, which is just crazy how it does all that automatically for us. So this data structure is now fairly useful if you need to pair two pieces of data together, and it can be of any type. So for example, if I need to pair a number to a string, all I would do is say pair, pass in integer, pass in string, and then just say a new pair, like so. And um, another cool note for you guys, I haven't actually done this yet, you don't need to pass in the types here on the right as we have them here, so that's kind of cool. But I actually actually like to type that out. 
So we'll go with that. And then if you want to go through putting that data in there, all you would do is say pair dot x, which, oh, no, not get x. We want to set x. We're going to pass in the value 5. Pair set y. Pass in favorite number. Actually, my, pro my real favorite number is probably 7. There you go. So that is how you would create a pair. And this could be used basically to associate two pieces of data, similar to how a hash map works. But we don't have the whole collection, and we also don't have the hashing going on, so it's a little bit simpler than a hash map. So the way this pair is different than a hash map, one, it's not a collection, it's just one item, and two, there is not like a key value it's more the neither one of these is designated as the key. So what we could do is we could actually make a collection of these. Uh, I didn't mean to type collection. I meant to type array list of pair. And we could say pairs, or maybe maybe we should say pairs. There we go. I like pairs. They're actually really good. And then we'll do that on the right side. And then we'll import array list. I'm gonna get rid of this junk up here. We're not gonna work with the person anymore. And we're just gonna work with some integers and strings. So what we can do is we can say pairs add and we can pass in that pair we created. So in here we need to define what type of pair because you can see we got some warnings here and you can research this if you'd like. But I'm just gonna go in here and say integer string all right so we have an array list a pair gotta do that on this side too or just get rid of that there and it seems like we don't got any errors so we're good now we can add numerous pairs in here so let's create another pair pair two, and then we'll just say pair two, set x. There we go. <laughs> All right, and it looks like we got an error here. Oh, I am passing in the 10 as a string. I uh, don't wanna do that. All right, and then we can add this to the list as well. Pairs add, pair two. All right, cool. So we're pretty much now just creating a list of these pairs. So that is a new way to structure your data if you're interested. All right, so that's just kind of some of the basics with working with generic types. Now, I don't want to get into it in too much detail. If you really want to get into it in detail, I would recommend just getting a Java book. They usually will have a chapter that gives you tons of information. But I was just reading it and I was like, Oh, this is boring and I'm probably never going to use this again. So what is with my mood today? I don't know, but I want to do, I do want to show you one other thing with generics that is interesting. It has to do with inheritance. And for this, we actually need to have a derived class. So right now we have this person class. And what I want to do is I actually want to create a new class. And this is going to come from this person class. So we're going to call this like, uh, what's an example of a person? Maybe an admin if we're making like a website or something. And and then we'll hit finish. And then all we have to do is say extends person. It's giving us an error because the person doesn't have a default constructor. So what we can do is we can go into the person and just add that in here if you want or you can customize the constructors inside of the the other class, the admin class. So that's all we have to do, really simple. That allows us to create a person without passing in an email and a last name, and those will just default to empty strings. If you want to allow that, here's how you would do that. All right, so now what I wanna do is I wanna show you that we can create a collection 
an array list of type person, call it people. And what we can do is we can create a new admin. This is automatically considered a person because it inherits from person. So we can say people.add and pass in A. So what this means, anytime we are working with an admin, we can consider this admin a person. So let's say we create a method and this takes a person, we'll call him P, and then we say P dot, what do we wanna do? We'll just output it, yeah, we'll just say sys out, and we just output P. We can actually invoke this throwing in an admin. So do something and pass in A, which is our admin account we just created. And uh, right now we're in a static method and this is an instance method. So you have two options here. You can create an instance of this class or you can just label this as static. So static void do something. Cool. Now let's run this and we get the default output for print lining an object, so that's good. So we're passing an admin to a person and it works. But here's the thing that, the reason I'm showing you all this junk is because if we create a similar method, let's copy and paste this, and instead of taking a person, let's say we take an array list of type person, we'll call it peeps, and we'll just get rid of this line for now. Here's what we cannot do. We cannot pass in an array list of admins. So if we create an array list of type admin, like so, and then what we do is we try to say, do something and pass in admins. Check this out, we're gonna get a compilation error. And it gives us an error saying that this do something with type person is not adequate. The reason it's doing that one is because we actually have this overload here. So if you want to see the other one, you can just comment this out for a sec. Now hovering over this, you can see the array list person is not adequate. So the, the moral of this really long story is that although there is inheritance, from a person down to an admin, there is no concept of inheritance from a list of people to a list of admins. So if you're trying to do polymorphism and you create a method that just takes a list of a parent class, you're not able to pass in a list that is typed to a derived class. Alternatively, you would want to convert that list to a, the appropriate type so I'll show you how to do something like that real quick. All you would do is you would need a new array list and have it typed correctly, person, and we'll just call it admins p, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's like a statement, admins p, all humans p though, so. Anyways, we'll just create new array list of type person, and then we'll do a loop for admin a coming from admins, what are we gonna do? We're going just to uh, cast that to a person type. Oh, we also already have this very one scope, so we'll just call it admin. Person is the cast from admin. <laughs> Sorry, a lot going on here. And that is going to be added to the new list we just created. There we go. So what the heck is going on here? We're going through each one of these admins and we're adding it to this admins person variation and it's going to be typed to this person and then we can actually pass that list in instead. So that is how you would invoke the method that takes a parent class list. There's probably alternative methods if you read a chapter on generic programming, this might come up and might give you a better suggestion. This is uh, this works though for me. It, it makes sense logically. 
So basically the admin doesn't work. It needs to be a person. So we just go through all the admins and cast them to a person and then use the new list. Although it might not be the ultimate scalable solution for most applications, it should do just fine. So let me know if you have a better idea on how to do that. But overall, I think we've covered pretty good amount of information and now we can move on to something new. So stay tuned. Uh, I'm pretty excited to see what else comes and I think we're going to get to the point where we're just kind of touching on a couple different things here and there just to get the basics and by the end we'll have a pretty good understanding of a lot of different subjects. So stay tuned. I'll see you in the next one. Oh and remember, always just do it.